possible without the amazing work that God Sinclair and Natasha and Mayors do, but for independency. So it's a round of applause to Natasha. Oh, Penny? Penny. Oh, what do you think happened to Penny? Penny died. It's, it's open-ended, I think. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's open-ended. Yeah. Maybe. I think it, it resonates with you when you go home tonight to think about it. What happened to her? Yeah. What happened to George? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. leaving, leaving it open-ended just... Right. Part two. Possibly. <laughs> we want to fund it. There has to be a part two. Yeah. Um, I know the money will do. <laughs> I saw where uh, the move was dedicated to Marshall Henville. Yes, Marshall Henville. Executive producer. Is there some connection there? Marshall was our producer. Um, she was murdered last February. Uh, no, her, her husband. Um, domestic violence. Oh. She never saw the finished film. Mm. Um, so that, that hurts. But she's here in the spirit, so. And so her memory lives on. She's a champion for like everyone. So. Marcia was an actress in my last film. It's called Sturbo Wendy. He was a, I'm known for comedy. I did comedy before. Um, God saw an article that was written on it um, and wanted to meet me through Marcia. So she's at the meeting and I met with God and God had this great idea to convert his radio program into a film so you can turn TV initially. Um, so basically, he has many stories. The initial idea he pitched, I didn't like it at all. I was like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. And I said, do you have any other interviews that you've done with people, with who, who, with whom he's interviewed? And there was a story about these two girls who went on vacation and met a guy and, well, the rest is history. From that way we developed traffic together. I love the music. The music was done by a group back home called the Carters. Um, everything is originally composed by them. Um, he did an amazing job, okay. and it's fantastic to actually be in a room with musicians to actually create music to your film. Um, I love this score. I always cry at the end. I think he did a fantastic job. Yes? Are you from Trinidad? Yes, I am. Born and bred. And uh, the story took place in Spain or what? Oh, um, the film was shot entirely on location in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, it's two islands. But Tobago, we subbed for a Spanish island. Oh. Um, so yeah, okay. low budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How long did it take you to put together the project? Oh God. Um, I met God in maybe August of 2013. Yeah, God, God, God. I met God in September, July, September 2013. We were asking to get a script done. Um, we shot in February, July, and November. Funding to make films is always an issue. Um, a lot of the funding is from the government of Toronto Tobago. We're very grateful. But sometimes they tell you you're going to get X amount and you get Y. And that happens so many times. So we shot the film over a period of eight months. Start and stop, start and stop. And that's the dedication of, of the cast and the crew to tell this story. And you know, every filmmaker has drama and trouble. That's part of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. What's amazing is for us to come halfway around the world to showcase what we can do on a small island in the Caribbean that you can appreciate as an audience. We're very, very grateful. You can talk. Please, another hand for Sean. Uh, this ladies and gentlemen has a, a, a beginning that don't even have time to go into. However, Natasha and I, well, she, we are talk show hosts back in Trinidad. We do a program called Our Independency. Now, this program came about because of my experience with substance abuse. I was a former soldier. I was introduced to crack cocaine in the military. 
I got discharged. I went to prison for six months. And when I came out of prison in 91, I decided I have to do something with my life and to try to dissuade other youngsters from throwing away their life and their career. So I came up with this program called Iron Dependency. I asked Natasha to host it with me. Back then, we've been on the air like 15 years now. Uh, we got married four months, four years ago. So we celebrated our uh, But this program was to educate people on substance abuse and its related ills, including drug trafficking. Yeah. And we were allowed to go inside the prisons in the UK to interview nationals because drug trafficking in the Caribbean started picking up at a fast rate. And a lot of our nationals of the Caribbean and the Trinidad and Tobago are locked up in the UK, US, Canada for drug trafficking. Yeah. And we got permission from the British High Commission, with the help of the British High Commission in Trinidad and the, and the Ministry of Justice in the UK to go into several prisons <coughs> and do actual interviews. We decided to take our program to another level. And we would record these interviews, bring them back home, play them on radio so we could dissuade others from trying what those others try. And then we decided to take it, let's do a film. And we didn't know where to start, but I opened the newspaper one day and I saw Sean's picture in it. <laughs> and an interview that he did with the first film that he did. And I contacted Marcia. Marcia turned on and Sean were close friends. And we met at a food court in West Mall. And on a napkin, Sean took down some information. And the result is what you just saw. <laughs> We're really proud of it because just one second. We're really proud of it because he captured, uh, him cast and crew captured exactly what we wanted to do. Scare the bejesus out of people <laughs> so that you don't be naive and gullible. Talk to your children. They need to see this because this is what happens to youngsters. They finish school. They want to let their hair down. Uh, you know, some people not. Oh yeah, there's a uh, there's an edited version for youngsters for children. So we take out some of the drug use and the cursing and all of that because we want to reach them with the actual content and the message. Do not be naive. Do not be gullible. Yeah, no. Just one, one second. This lady had. No, this is the raw version. stomach and the suitcase does not matter. You go to jail. That's it. You just a walking suitcase for them. And if you die, they cut you, they take it out, and they get rid of your body. They don't care. No, once you die with it, you see, once you swallow pellets, you cannot eat. And and if you eat your stomach acids with you know, sure. In the, the true story, um, there's two girls, and after they ingested the coat, they traveled and they reached the destination. One of them, she got hungry, and she ate a muffin. And the acid from the food corroded the uh, pellet in the months and the coat, and she died. Um, that was the original ending for the film. But then we thought somebody would think, hey, I just won't eat. 
But sometimes they package it badly. Exactly. And sometimes, well, shit happens. <laughs> so it's important, you know, just to show what can happen. So, so, so the, 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 the bottom line is, um, well, now they've gone a step further. Now, people got away with this like 10 years ago because the, they would go swallow it, go on a flight, not eat, especially to London, and they got away. But then people started noticing, oh, you can travel eight hours and not eat anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why nice. people started getting caught. And then they came up, we interviewed another young man who, when he, he went, he got arrested eventually, but when he, um, he, he stopped over in Barbados, he said for like four hours, and he had lunch. And mm -hmm. so we asked him, well, how could you do that? How, did that? how is that possible? Mm -hmm. And then he explained to us that they're now packaging it in foil, carbon paper, mm -hmm. plastic, foil again and then you swallow that so even if you eat your stomach acids don't penetrate mm. oh, oh, what they do if they get caught the police will take them to a hospital and administer an laxative and they would they would they would be able to pass it out. In some like in the UK there the all of that right in the airport itself. UK customs would have all of that equipment. Uh, there. there was a story last year of a guy who was well, he got caught but he was well connected and he went to the hospital and they cut it out. Yeah, and that happened in Trinidad actually. Nothing well he got away from yeah, he got away. But you see, you have to be well connected for that to happen. What I mean is, is the, the son of a very prominent person back home, and he decided to traffic drugs to the UK. But what happened when he got up there, one ruptured in the stomach, so he boarded a flight immediately and came back home. Well, as soon as he got a flight, he came back to Trinidad, and he called whoever he had to call, and he went to a medical center, and they took it out, gave it back to him, but now he has he, it damaged him so bad that he had to walk walking around with a bag now, but they give him back the pillars, that's the sad part of it. Yeah. And we don't know what happened to it, and that's there. Well, 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 more often than not, sometimes it happens like how it happened in this scene here, or sometimes people volunteer to do it. It, 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 it depends. It, you see, they, like now with the world recession going on, and a lot of poor communities, they target people in depressed communities. Now, five thousand dollars, five fifty thousand dollars to a poor person. That's, I mean, that's a lot of money. And they would think that there are some people like who we interviewed. Some of them volunteered. Actually, they went to the guy and said, "Look, I'm in a really bad state, and it's money. They say, okay, do this for us." And they go up there and they get caught. Some of them are even used to distract. So the, the, the authorities know they're coming while a bigger portion gets through. So as I said, they're just walking suitcases to these guys. They just don't care. Yeah, uh, just a quick uh, uh, congratulations to Sean McKay. You handled this subject really well. And uh, it's, it's, it's shocking to see the way things happen in their world. So uh, looking at this, and obviously like uh, future projects, uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, just from the, uh, the DOP point of view, I just wanted to ask you a couple of things. That, uh, I saw some of the shots uh, that were taken like too fast. Uh, at the block, uh, right in the beginning, like was it really necessary, or if you would have done it even normal way, it would have been nice. Um, well, DP's not here. <laughs> 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 so yeah, <laughs> but uh, I will send him your comments. Um, which, which shot was that? Do you remember? Uh, uh, from the top, like there were a couple of like quick shots which happened, like these guys are walking on the, the seashore and everything. Yeah. Which I felt was. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, yeah, that, that's our that's show right there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some things you look and you go back and you're like, I'll change that. I wish we shot this differently. I wish, you know, we didn't have seen a couple of close ups. I wish we had. But it is what it is. And you learn from your mistakes, and hopefully next time it'll be much, much better. I think we did a good job. Sorry, yes. Yes, John. Yes, sir. I met you last night. Yes, you did.
invited me to come see the movie. Thank you for coming. I enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. I understand it's a world premiere. It's a U.S. premiere. Oh, U.S. premiere. Okay. So it's the first time the Pan African Film Festival. It's yes, sir. incredible. You did an incredible job. Yeah. 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 You guys have been so cool. Awesome. Are you going to be the festival?